Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And I'm here to talk about The Flash by Mark Wade Omnibus, Volume 1 from DC Comics. So join me. And welcome back, everybody. So here we have The Flash by Mark Wade Omnibus, Volume 1. I love when it's a Volume 1. Always gives me hope for more volumes. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that this has been one of my most wanted DC Omnis for years. And here it finally is. Mark Wade's run on The Flash, the very beginning. And I'm going to be talking about the importance of this. Uh, it is going to be a little hard to talk about this run and why I love it so much without going into spoilers. But I am going to do my best just to talk about little things that won't spoil much for anybody. So... Here we have the cover by Ty Templeton. Now, what's really interesting is that there is a direct market cover. That one there by Alan Davis. Now, that one didn't really show up in for retailers until the day that the book came out. Like, people didn't even know what it was going to look like. But now DC seems to be going into the direct market cover game. And I know some of my European watchers or people from overseas don't really appreciate direct market covers, but it's a huge thing here in America where people pick and choose which covers to get. But yes, this is the standard one. This is the one that's going to be available everywhere. Everything else, the spine and the back is identical. Uh, here we have the flashes. Oh my gosh. This, I mean, it's not one of my favorite covers, but it definitely showcases the love of legacy that Mark Wade instituted into the flash. So look at the spine really quick. The Flash by Mark Wade, Volume 1. Love it. DC logo down there. And then the back of the book. My name is Wally West, and I'm The Flash, the fastest man alive. Let me tell you something. Get used to reading that, because just about every other issue, you're going to be reading that. Love it. In 1990, Mark Wade. Well, you can read that for yourself. Talking about the little history of Mark Wade. Little. I'm sorry. That sounds demeaning. The history of Mark Wade. Uh, writing the uh, character of the Flash. Underneath the dust jacket, we have this image from uh, the artist Greg LaRoque. And the image is separated by the spine. And it seems like that's what uh, DC has done lately. All right, so that's the art on board. Let's go ahead and crack this open, talk about the importance of not just the stories in here, but the character of the Flash in general. Okay, before we crack this open... I did want to point out that the stories in here have been available in these thick trade paperbacks that DC started putting out in 2016. Uh, now, this third trade paperback goes a little bit further uh, than the omnibus, so I am going to be talking about the content. But I actually appreciate the mapping of the Return of Barry Allen in the omnibus more than I did the trade paperbacks, because I thought, well, I'll talk about it when I get there about that. Uh, but yes, these have been available in trade paperbacks. Some of these are out of print now and hard to find and get pretty expensive. So you might just be better off getting the omnibus. All right, cracking this open. Let's talk about the content here. So here we have these N pages. The Flash by Mark Wade, Omnibus Volume 1. Here are all the credits, uh, including the collection cover artist right there. Um, now, this is a really difficult subject for me to talk about, uh, but there is a creator in here uh, that has been credited and is somebody that I don't talk about on my channel. I don't name him by names because uh, he, he's, how do I word this? He's doing prison time for a crime he committed. And something that I have read a while back was that the money that he was getting the royalties are going to uh, people affected by this crime. So that's something that I read a long time ago. I don't know if that's still true or not. Uh, but if that stuff bothers you, you can look that stuff up yourself if that keeps you from reading a book, if you will. But I do like to inform people ahead of time when things like that happen. Uh, okay. So introduction by Mark Wade. It's the exact same introduction you got in the trade paperbacks. So nothing new. It's the one from 2016, but it's the perfect introduction to his book. Here is your table of contents right here, kicking it off with the 50th anniversary issue, family business, and it's broken up into arcs. 
and you have Born to Run, which is year one, and Misdirection, and then back here, of course, you have The Return of Barry Allen, which is broken up into different storylines, or uh, different story titles. So this collects The Flash 62 to 91, annual numbers 4 through 6, Green Lantern 30 and 31, number 40, and The Flash special number 1, which you saw there, and Justice quarter uh justice league quarterly number 10 so the important thing to note is that this is all after crisis on infinite earths so you had mike barron's run then you had william messner lobes and william messner lobes ended up leaving the book to go and focus on wonder woman and in came mark wade who really hadn't done a lot of writing back then he had done some stuff for legion of superheroes he had been an assistant editor but really never had a chance to write comics so it was because of brian augustine who we lost earlier this year and it's such a tragedy we've lost so many creators alone this week my gosh it just doesn't seem fair and as a matter of fact carlos pacheco actually drew some of the issues that will be included in the next omnibus and and uh, mark wade in the introduction writes this beautiful just love for his friend of brian because both of them worked on this together he talks about how there's not a single issue in here that he wrote that he did not not i don't want to say get it approved by brian because it was his editor but they just talked things over and there were a couple of changes that brian would make but any change that brian would make he would let mark wade know so it is very important to note that during this time this is wally west flash because something happens to Barry Allen in the pages of Crisis on Infinite Earths. So the whole Flash legacy, because it is important to talk about that, started with Flash number one in 1940, and that is the character of Jay Garrick, this guy right here, uh, the guy with the metal hat. You've seen probably in the TV shows. That's how most people find out about the Flash. Then in 1956, DC decided to do something pretty unique and decide to replace the Flash, Jay Garrick, with Barry Allen in showcase number four. And that became your Silver Age Flash. As a matter of fact, some people state that as the beginning of the Silver Age, and I know there's discussion about that or disagreements about that, where the Silver Age really began for comics. But regardless, that's where Barry Allen was first introduced. And the interesting thing about The Flash is that you have characters like Superman and Batman. And, and, and characters like Superman and Batman will always be Clark Kent, Kal-El, and Bruce Wayne. No matter how long, well, <laughs> they don't really stay dead or are missing for for long periods of times. Even Diana Prince, you know, the, those characters, Diana, Princess of Themyscira, those characters just always come back and become Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman. Flash is different. Flash has gone through a period of different people having the title of the Flash. And they stick around for a long time. Jay Garrick was the Flash in the Golden Age and was replaced by Barry Allen. And that, of course, kicked off the whole Earth 2 idea. And then came Wally West. So after Crisis, something happened to Barry Allen. And Wally West was Barry Allen's sidekick. He was Kid Flash. He was Kid Flash in the New Teen Titans. But something horrible happened to Barry Allen, which I'm sure most of you probably know. But he lost his life in a heroic way. And... Wally West decided to pick up the mantle of the greatest man that he knew to become the Flash. And that's where Mike Barron's run starts with Flash number one. Now, unlike Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman after Crisis, we never really got a year one until this particular run of Mark Waid's Flash. So the first story here, it just starts off with a legacy story. It introduces us to the character of John Fox, who is named after John Broom and Gardner Fox, two of Mark Waid's favorite Flash creators. And it's about a villain that is just fighting the Golden Age Flash, the Silver Age Flash, and then Wally West Flash, my Flash, the Flash I grew up with. But we're not done yet, because he goes far into the future, 700 years into the future, to go and fight the next Flash, which is John Fox. Now, this gives you the idea that the legacy of the Flash will continue. 
long after Wally West is gone, long after Barry Allen, of course, and Jay Garrick are, have been gone, the Flash legacy will continue. I love this. That even though it took 700 years, they beat you. We beat you. Man, love it. So Mark Wade, right off the bat, started introducing us to this idea that the Flash is not just about superheroics. It's not about good guy, bad guy. It's about legacy and the love that you have for the people that came before you. And I think that's what struck a chord with a lot of us that were reading this at the time. It was different. Now, in the introduction, he goes on and talks about, and he's been uh, strongly opinionated about this, how in comic books, since Watchmen and the Dark Knight books, it seems like they've taken a darker tone. We have a lot more anti-heroes than we used to. And, and he said there's nothing wrong with those stories, but not every comic has to follow those guidelines. And when he came into The Flash, that's something he wanted to do. There are some dark things that happen, of course, but it, it, he makes it a lighthearted story. He makes it a story more about love and family and friendship. And I know that sounds hokey and dorky, but my gosh, it worked and it just sucked us in. So back then, you know, I was a big X-Men fan, but this was coming out at the time when I was just getting some DC titles, not all of them, mainly following some of the artists. I was getting Batman and Detective Comics and Superman. I think I was into action and Man of Steel. For some reason, adventures never really clicked with me. Uh, getting some Wonder Woman. But I didn't pick this up until this particular four-issue story. This is the annual, by the way, with Golden Glider there. I didn't even talk about this annual right here. So this is the 2001, Armageddon 2001 annual, which is pretty much Monarch coming into the 90s and trying to find somebody that's going to be Monarch. It crosses over all the annuals at DC. But here we have his first issue, Born to Run, year one. And year one is the same thing that Batman did year one and Man of Steel did at uh, Superman and then George Paytas's Wonder Woman. He wrote that first year. It's an origin story of Wally West as the Flash. It does it in a different way. He does it in a series of flashbacks. He runs into his grandfather, Ira West, who is the father of Iris West, um, Wally West's favorite aunt, who passed away. And she was also married to the greatest man that he's ever known, and that is Barry Allen. So Barry Allen is Wally West's uncle, who also happened to be the Flash, who also happened to be a great forensic um, police so he visits his grandpa, he starts looking at photo albums, and starts reminiscing. By the way, the relationship between him and his grandfather, Ira, is one of those that he mentions he lives only 12 miles away, but he never really goes and visits. And that's kind of sad, because, you know, a lot of us, the older we get, life happens, and we don't tend to go and visit our family that are so close to us. And I love that about this, like, so he has a flashback about his time when he was... Kid Flash, and of course we get the origin story of how he was struck by lightning, because sometimes lightning strikes twice, uh, and then he became Kid Flash. Before joining the Teen Titans, he had this costume that looked just like the Flash's costume, so he became his partner. And something happens where something goes wrong, and he, Barry just pretty much, I don't want to say fires him, but tells him, you know, you can't be my partner anymore, and there's a reason for that, it's, there's a health reason. But it doesn't matter. Wally is a hero. So even though it's killing him, he still dons the costume of Kid Flash to go and help people. And I love this last part. I, I This isn't a spoiler, but I, I love this line right here where he, re, he reconnects with his grandfather who has lost a daughter. And it you know he, he feels so empty. And here's his grandson who never comes and visits. And I love this beautiful reconnection. But... This line right here, oh my gosh, he talks about Barry Allen, and he says, you know, Barry may have taught me how to be Kid Flash, but Iris taught me how to be Wally West, and that line stuck with me, and has stuck with me for years. While this is a story about the Flash, it's also a story about Iris, and the legacy they left behind, and the legacy is this hero, Wally West, that to me will always be the best damn Flash that ever was. And it's probably because I grew up reading these adventures of Wally as the Flash. So there's a reason some of us weren't biggest fans of the New 52 era. 
because they did away with Wally. And that's why we were really hopeful when the Rebirth era started. We get a couple of issues here with Aquaman going bad because of this crown. It's just a couple fill-in issues. Uh, the return of Abraca... Uh, uh, on Kenny Omar Talk Pretty one day. Abracadabra in a kind of sad story about this dead character and time travel. There are a lot of uh, <laughs> tropes you're going to see here. It's not just family and legacy. There's time travel elements because we are talking about Mark Waid's run. This is one of the most confusing stories in here, but I do want to show it. Uh, this is the Flash Annual number 5, but it's also the crossover with Eclipso. Now, if you didn't know what was going on, Eclipso was taking over superheroes. He wanted the Flash, but instead he took over Golden Glider. Uh, the Trickster's in here, Captain Cold. Chill Blaine, I think, the Trickster, or Golden Glider's boyfriend. So Captain Cold and Golden Glider are brother and sister. That's why it's important in Jeff John's run uh, to have read this. Well, not really, but to get to know these characters. But the important thing about this is that the art is done by Travis Cheris, who blew up. He started off as a Jim Lee clone, is what we used to call him, and developed his own style. And oh my gosh, his style was so magnificent these days. He has evolved past that Jim Lee stage. He is just a phenomenal artist. If you've not seen it lately, man. I thought he perfected it during the Wildcats, X-Men, uh one shot but oh my gosh his stuff with the matter veterans um oh wow it is so good but yeah the daniel itself is just one of those that i'm glad it's included in here it doesn't make any sense if you're not reading everything else but if they had taken it out i would have been upset uh we get the crossover with green lantern and gorilla grod it's a four-part crossover right there we have a two-parter with a character it's a brand new character named alchemy now the holy trinity of dc comics i think for most people are wonder woman batman superman that's it but forget that man to me the most important character in dc comics has always been the flash because everything revolves around him the beginning of the silver age was showcase number four crisis on infinite earths we get a new flash hell there's a series called flashpoint that led into the new 52 and they did my boy wally west dirty but everything seems to just revolve around the character of the flash no matter what and even the justice league uh stories by grant morrison are excellent all right so after this two-parter with this new character named alchemy we get something that i could tell mark wade has been wanting to do by the way during this time he's also uh, dating this young lady named linda park who first appeared in flash i think it was issue number 28 but here we get a Christmas issue. This is super sweet because it's Wally West with Jake Eric hanging out. And I feel like this is something really important that Mark Wade wanted to do. He wanted to start introducing these older characters, all these speedsters, and then build on the mythos of them. And something called the Speed Force, which you're going to be hearing a lot about, especially in the next volume. And I thought this was a really sweet story. Christmas story but the biggest part about this story is that towards the end here they're having a Christmas party and they get an unexpected visitor so Wally goes to get the door and the unexpected visitor is Barry Allen wearing the Flash costume that leads into what I think and what a lot of us think probably is the greatest Flash story ever the return of Barry Allen now, I'm not going to go into details about what it is exactly, how he came back, how long he sticks around, if he sticks around, what exactly his motives are. But I will say, it is the best damn Flash stories I've read, bar none. Now, the way that it's collected here, I think it's done really great. The mapping, it's different than the mapping in Volume 2, which is, and I mean Volume 2 of the trade paperback. Because after issue 77 in the trade paperback collection, we get the Bloodlines annual, which interrupts the flow of the story. That's why I think sometimes mapping, you don't have to follow the release order. You can just follow the order where you think it's best read. So in this, they left the annual after the return of Barry Allen's story. And I appreciated that because it doesn't break the flow. Even the Green Lantern story is collected in here. Uh, that takes place during the return of Barry Allen. So yes, 
Flash's mentor, the greatest man alive that Wally West ever knew, is back. How is that going to affect everything? What does that mean? Can people now cheat death? Is he the hero that Wally remembers? Is he going to take over the Flash role? Are there going to be two Flashes running around? But he's back. And I don't want to spoil this at all because I love this story. I think everybody should experience it for themselves. So I'm just going to pass on here with Greg LaRoque's art. Mm -mm -mm. Linda. Okay, Wally, I see you back there. Woo! And legs, boy. All right. There's the crossover with Barry Allen and Green Lantern there. And then the speedsters like Ma Max Mercury comes into this. And eventually you're, you're going to get a lot more speedsters showing up. And it's going to build this whole thing of this idea of the speed force and what it is. Almost like a religion. Almost like an afterlife, if you will. And after the return of Barry Allen, that's where they collect the annual, which is the first appearance of Argus. It was the Bloodlines annuals. And it was the first appearance of all these characters, new characters in the DC universe. So, really, if you've never read The Return of Barry Allen and Year One Born to Run, those are the ones worth picking up this omnibus for. Uh, this is uh, this one's drawn by Phil Hester, I believe. Uh, it looks like his artwork. Now, after The Return of Barry Allen, we have a brand new artist. Now, that, that's the cover right here to the direct market. But the brand new artist, I remember when this was coming out, I just didn't dig. I was like, what is this? This looks like a kid's book now. Wish I'd get on that cosmic treadmill just like Wally West and travel back in time and smack my young self in the mouth. This is Mike Waringo. The legendary and great Mike Waringo. Uh, now, of course, it is a big change from... Let me see if I can find Greg LaRoque's... Yeah, Greg LaRoque's artwork. And you have this realistic style to this cartoony style. And it took me a long time to just get into it. I remember not, not liking it, but I stuck with the book because I really liked the story. And that's so weird to talk about now. And it sounds blasphemous. Oh, and Nightwing and Starfire show up in these issues right here. So it's almost like a small uh, Teen Titans reunion. That's Nightwing during with his 80s costume and his 80s mullet. But yeah, we Ringo eventually grew on me. I kind of dug his style. And then by the time he left, I believe it was, yeah, Carlos Pacheco and Salvador La Roca eventually ended up taking over the run. And I wasn't happy to see him go. It's, it's weird <laughs> when you go back and look at things in a different way. Uh, this is Razor right here. Two issue series. Argus comes back. So, you know, they're not all great stories, and but for a first volume, I thought Mark Wade did a phenomenal run. Uh, this is another Christmas issue. Man, he really liked these Christmas issues. And again, R Ringo drawing the majority of this stuff. So it's mainly Greg LaRoque and Mike Ringo drawing this omnibus. Now, the question that I am going to get asked because I get asked every so often. I've gone on my channel and stated that Jeff Johns run on the flash to me is my favorite run on the flash my favorite story comes from mark wade's run but without mark wade there is no jeff john's flash just like without carl barks there's no don rosa uncle scrooge comics just like without chris claremont there's no astonishing x-men there's no new x-men so to me without mark wade building the mythos introducing new elements to the flash making the character a little more jokey, a little more laid back. None of those people would have had a career. Well, I mean, yeah, they probably would have. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> writing and drawing uh, Flash, that, that's always going to be a thing. But I'm saying none, none of those people could have borrowed elements from this to make their runs epic. So my point is, this is one of the most important releases this year. You've not read Mark Wade's Flash. You need to do yourself a favor and check it out. Whether if you can find the cheap trade paperbacks. By the way, Year One Born to Run. That's available if you ever want to check that out. In a crappy trade paperback that is really cheap. Uh, the Return of Barry Allen is also available in a cheap trade paperback. So you don't have to get them in those thick trades. But I know, you know this is the home of collected editions. I do try to tell you where you can find some of these stories sometimes if they're out of print. 
So you might be better off with the Omnibus. It is $150. And this one, I didn't even talk about the page count, did I? Uh, this one here has 1,088 pages. Max Mercury, who plays a bigger role in the second volume. I hope that comes out soon. All right. So here we have the extras. And that's what's really lacking here. You have this original cover line art by Joe Kubert, who did the special number one. And then... The biographies here. Mark Wade, William Messner Loeb's, Greg LaRoque, Mike Ringo, Jose Marsan Jr. Big one that's missing here really is Brian Augustine, who without him, Mark Wade would not have been in, on this book. Let's take a look at the binding. So it is sewn binding, and there's that eye. Again, 1,088 pages. And it is this glossy paper. Not as thick as they used to be, but then again, they don't really need to be. Um, and you saw all the extras, table of contents, and there are page numbers. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you've never read this and this is your first time going into Mark Wade's run of The Flash. If you own this in single issues, uh, the old, old trade paperbacks or the latest trade paperbacks that came out in 2016. Uh, and if you're going to upgrade. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Oh, and let me know which cover you're going to get because as most of us and retailers didn't know, there was a direct market cover that just kind of popped up out of nowhere. With yeah. So yeah, let me know which cover you're going to get. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.